Okay, so welcome to part three of this series of videos on BJTs. This is going to be talking about using a BJT as a switch. Okay, so uh, I'm going to use the example on page 237 of your textbook. So uh, basically, I'm configuring this BJT as a switch. That means what I want to do is that I have a voltage coming in here. Okay, I'm going to have a voltage coming in here. And because there's a voltage coming in here, I'm going to switch on this LED. So it's instead of pressing your finger down on a traditional mechanical switch, I'm going to have a voltage in here. It turns on this LED. Okay, so acting as a switch is this BJT. Remember, I, I have a current coming in here. Means once I have a current coming in here, I turn on the collector current flowing all the way down here. And this sort of acts like a, a switch, a floodgate, uh, so to speak. And once I have current and voltages all coming down here, this LED turns on. So it acts like a switch. Now, in order for me to use this L, uh, BJT as a switch, I need to be able to know what values of uh, resistor uh, I have to use at the base. So this base resistor kind of controls this is like the control of how much uh, current flows in here. Okay, I need to have a certain amount of current flowing in here in order for this to work properly as a switch. So I want full current, full power coming through here and this LED will be its full brightness. All right. uh, to use BJT speak, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive it into saturation. Okay. Drive saturation means I'm going to have the full amount of current flowing down here. Okay, so just remember that. So this is a calculation uh, analysis of how I find what value of the base resistance I must use in order to have the full current and voltage and power flowing through here in order to light up the LED properly. All right, so uh, here we go. Now, uh, I'm not going to start off at this branch Instead, I'm going to start off at this branch here. I'm going to do the analysis on this branch here. So remember, uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law, I'm going to start off with uh, 5 volts here. And when I have 5 volts, every time it needs a, a component, in this case it's a resistor, there's going to be some voltage drop across here. So some voltage is going to drop here. So from 5 volts, some is going to drop. When it crosses the LED, some voltage is going to drop here as well. So 5 volts, drop some here, drop some here. And remember in video 2, I told you there is a voltage drop across the collector and the emitter. So there's going to be another voltage drop here until it reaches 0 volts. Okay, so I'm going to analyze this branch first. Now, don't, don't think about this branch yet. I'm just going to analyze this branch and I'm going to tell you why I analyze this branch. Okay. Okay. So let's start off with 5 volts. So if I take 5 volts and I minus away this voltage drop, I'm going to use Ohm's law, V equals to IR, right? To find the V drop, I'm going to use V equals to IR. So I of the collector, R of the resistor here which is 470 ohms I minus away the voltage drop across the LED in this case it's given as 2 volts this is the information given the forward voltage of the LED is 2 volts so this is 2 volts here so I have to minus away the 2 volts I have to drop another voltage here called the VCE at saturation Okay, if you're wondering what in the world is saturation, remember this is the, t the point where the full current flows down. So that's saturation. Basically, all it means is that uh, I have the maximum amount of current flowing through here. Okay, so I want that value VCE here because it's the ideal, right? We want the full value of current flowing through here at saturation. Therefore, we take the VCE at saturation, which is 0 0.2 volts. And we end up with 0 volts here. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to find what is the collector current flowing through here. So the collector current flowing through here 
is 5 minus 2 minus 0 0.2 over 470. Okay. And you find out that after pressing your calculator, you can go and press your calculator. This will give me 6 milliamps. Okay, so I know that I have 6 milliamps flowing down as the IC, okay, the collector current. So this is where I tell you why I want to find out what's happening on this branch. It's like you're wondering, you want to find what's happening here, you want to know what value here, why you going to find here. So this is why. Because I know that the base current, the base current is related to the collector current. If you remember the second uh, video that I made, you know that the collector current is beta times of the base current. Okay, so now I'm using this information to jump to this branch so I can work on this branch okay so I use this information to get me onto this branch so I can find now what is my base current which is IC divided by beta IC is 6 milliamps and beta value given is 30 Okay, so 6 divided by 30 is uh, 0 0.2 milliamps. 0 0.2 milliamps. Okay, so now I've got the uh, current flowing into the base. So I've got a current flowing into the base now. Now I can analyze this branch. Now I can analyze this branch. So I start off with the voltage at the V in and they tell me that uh, I'm going to switch on this fella, this LED with an input voltage of 3.3. Why 3.3? I don't know. Probably the previous subsystem will give me an output of 3.3 volts. So that's why they're thinking, okay, if I use 3.3 volts, so how much resistor must I have here in order to turn on this fella, to turn on the LED, okay? So that's the condition we are given with, you're going to work with this. So I have 3.3 volts. So I have 3.3 volts. I'm going to have a voltage drop here. Okay, so I have to minus away the IBRB. Okay, so I'm at this point now. And in order to go back down to ground, remember in video 2, I told you there is another voltage drop here called the VBE. So I have to minus away the V, B, E, and then finally I reach 0 volts. So this equals to 0 volts. Alright, so let's fill in the numbers. I've got 3.3 minus uh, the base current. We found out was 0 0.2. The base resistor is what we want to find. The VBE value is 0 0.7, is given in the information here, so minus 0 0.7, and this will be 0 volts, okay? So if I rearrange my equation to make RB here, uh, I'll have 3.3 minus 0 0.7 divided by 0 0.2 milliamps, and I will end up with a value RB of 14.664 ohms, okay? So, uh, but of course you won't be able to find 14.664 ohms exactly uh, in, the, in the cupboard at the back. So you got to go to uh, the E24 series, look for the closest value uh, to this. And here's a tip. Pro tip, yeah? So what you need to do is to choose a slightly lower resistance. Why slightly lower? Because having a slightly lower will ensure that we confirm will drive this fella to saturation.
if you choose a slightly higher it might might not drive this fella to saturation okay so remember from the e24 series choose one that is slightly lower in value the next lower value all right so this is how it works as a as a uh, switch so please go and study this again work it out yourself in your textbook and make sure that you are able to find out what is the rb value by yourself so just to summarize this fella works as a switch i have a voltage here that means current is going to flow into the base and once i have a small little current flowing into a base boom it opens the floodgates for all the current to flow through the collector and down through the emitter along the way as it's flowing it's going to turn on the led that's why it acts as a switch okay turning on the led here and in order to turn it on to full brightness to get it to saturation i need to bias this fella to kind of find out exactly what uh, resistor value i need and then to find to find out what resistor value i need i do this calculation brings me down to this branch and i can find out what is the base resistance okay so watch this video again if you are slightly unsure uh, but you need to know how to bias to to do a circuit analysis of a bjt when it is acting as a switch okay so this is the end of this video uh, next video i'm going to talk about using the bjt as a amplifier all right